Hi, Lily. How are you? I'm well, Lily. It's good to see you. Yeah, I was going to say, it's been some time since we worked together at eBay, um, but I'm glad that we've stayed in touch all these years. Um, and thank you so much for in inviting me to this podcast. I'm real excited to to talk about, you know, some of the great things that you've done and kind of your um, your career history and just this wonderful company you've created. I'm just, I'm so happy and excited for you. Um, so before we do that, um, let's just do a quick intro. Uh, why don't you introduce, introduce yourself, then I'll introduce myself. Yeah. Um, well, first, I want to thank uh, Women um, Who Code and having us um, be invited to contribute to this uh, membership and um, creating this uh, this video. And yeah, so, uh, you know, you said earlier we met at eBay. This was back in 2007, around that time, um, the early days of eBay. Yeah. Um, and uh, and the rest is history. Um, but a little bit about myself. Um, I started uh, my career in cybersecurity right after graduate school back in uh, 2000. Um, so uh, back in the 90s when I was going through college, um, I, I knew back then I wanted to be in tech. Um, however, um, you know, um, I originally wasn't studying tech um, a degree. I was in biology and chemistry. So anyways, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, you're going <laughs> to talk about some very interesting things about me. But uh -huh. um, but yeah, so I, I've been in cybersecurity for about 23 plus years. And uh, everything I've done in my career has been in cybersecurity in many different aspects from being an engineer to being a technology auditor uh, to being in a cybersecurity company that um, creates cybersecurity software at RSA. And um, yeah, and then now my career is completely different, but still in cybersecurity. I'm an entrepreneur running a, uh, a cybersecurity company building software for the industry. So that's a little bit about me, and I'm sure you'll uh, dive in more today. Yeah, of course. Um, quick intro on me. I'm not nearly as interesting. My name is Lily Federer. I've worked in um, audit, IT audit. Sarbanes-Oxley audits, um, SOC 1, SOC 2s, and um, I did this for a number of years through different firms, through Deloitte, through um, private companies. We mentioned we met through eBay, and um, right now I'm actually um, freelance consulting on my own. I have my own company, Harico Consulting, and so I've been doing that for the past couple of months, and it's been great to have um, some freedom. Um, to be able to do that on my own. And, you know, you being an entrepreneur, I think you can certainly appreciate, you know, that you get to manage and d dictate how you kind of want the engagement to go. And I think there's um, some great um, learnings from that. So anyway, I'm, I'm excited to talk about you because we haven't had a chance to talk in a while. I know there's been a lot of um, achievements you've made. So I'd love to have us go into that. Um, to start, I guess, just like, you know, I'm kind of wondering, like, what's your family history? Um, you know, like, what did your mom and dad do? Like, how did how did you get into this path? <laughs> okay, well, I'm going to start calling you L2, just so we can differentiate. Sure. Yes, Both of our okay. I'm two. Um, <laughs> so, so my family history is um, pretty humble. Um, I was born in Malaysia and I came to immigrated to the United States when I was seven years old. Um, my parents were um, not college educated. So I'm actually the first to go to college in my family. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. So um, I'm the eldest of two. Um, first to go to college, uh, we're immigrant family from Malaysia. Uh, my parents um, have very humble uh, position jobs when I was growing up. They had to work really hard uh, to uh, allow us to have the opportunity that Esther and I have today. Um, my parents mainly worked uh, in the restaurant business um, from 
the time, you know, I was a child to teenagers years, and then my dad transitioned uh, from being in restaurants into uh, working for the US Postal Office so that he can um, build out his retirement plan and all that good stuff. And so uh, I grew up, um, you know, mainly without having parental guidance at home because my parents were working most of the time. And, um, you know, being an immigrant family, um, there were a lot of firsts for everything. And um, yeah, so that's kind of like a little bit about my background. And uh and I think it definitely made me who I am today. Um, yeah, in many different aspects. That's fabulous. Um, and kudos to you for being the first person in your family to go to college. I mean, that's just, you know, I love hearing stories like that. That's that's really wonderful, you know, and certainly you've gone beyond and also created your own company and you've been very successful. So, I mean, you're girl power all the way. Um, <laughs> So I guess like, you know, a big question I have is like, you know, you have this incredible journey in tech. Um, like, how did you know, what was that moment where you knew that this was a path that you wanted to take forward? Because like you mentioned, you were a biology major to yeah. start. <laughs> yes. So it was my junior year in undergrad. Um, I was going through organic chemistry genetics and all those upper level classes in undergrad for my biology and chemistry major. Um, and at that time, um, I had met, you know, other friends who were engineers, electrical engineering, and spent a lot of time in the computer lab and just really fell in love with technology um, and just like just getting really excited about, you know, uh, web back then it was like web 1.0, um, you know, creating GIF, you know, uh, files of like, you know, pictures that are like running and moving. Um, and it was just like really exciting. Um, and I didn't have any coding experience back then because I was a biology major. I knew how to like, I knew chemistry, molecular chemistry, but I had no idea about like programming languages. So it was completely self-taught um, with a bunch of friends help. And I just really got into it, loved it. Um, had my own website, had all these like, you know, um, and, and I think in the early days of my college years, even in freshman year, um, I was spending a lot of time on chat networks. Um, and back then it was the IRC network, like um, which, it's kind of like the early days of, um, uh, I would call it way early of social media, but that was yeah. when university um, students were able to connect with each other. And then in addition to many other cultural channels and other channels that we were able to um, get access to. So those are kind of like my earlier tech experience of just being a natural like person just organically being really interested in you know in computers and what you can do with the internet um and the pivotal moment for me was after I graduated from undergrad um I spent a little time working at a hospital trying to evaluate which professional path I was going to go with my biology and chemistry career uh, right. to and when I was in the hospital system, I felt like it was really inefficient in the way their business process was run. And I really wanted to build a database to track, um, you know, performance evaluation uh, for my department. And I was just so, so passionate and believed in this, you know, cost so much, this control so much that I pitched to my manager and I offered to do it for free, to build this custom system for free. And just to show her a proof of concept of what it could do for us, right, as a department. And um, first of all, she completely turned me down. <laughs> um, Even though you offered to do it for free, this yeah, proof completely of turned me down. Um, but, but it was, it was that, that, that excitement and that passion of mine that kind of led me to the rest of my life. Um, I didn't stop there because she didn't want to pursue this project. I actually 
created the database with or without her wanting to see it just to see, just to prove out my this thesis about the efficiency and the business process improvement. And while I was going through developing this database for performance evaluation, I had a lot of challenges because I wasn't professionally trained to be a programmer. And so I had to do a lot of research on my own, um, you know, get into some really advanced queries that I needed to know how to do. Um, and I had to consult with my electrical engineering friends. And so it was at that moment I realized this is what I wanted to go to grad school for. Um, I wanted to go to grad school so I can acquire the technical skill to do this and 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 really focus on process improvement using technology. And that was the layer of my passion. Um, so that's that was the, the most pivotal moment for me that ignited the fire for everything else that came into place. That's amazing. And it actually did come from you being in a hospital and trying to build an efficiency um, improvement. I think that's fabulous. Um, you know, most of us, it's like, you know, we were working in tech and then it came out, but I think it's really special that it came out for you in that way. Um, let's talk roadblocks. Um, can you share a time when you were faced with a significant barrier or obstacle in your career and how did you overcome it? You know, because I know, for example, um, one of the jobs that you have had in your career is sales. And, you know, that was a big change from kind of, you know, some of the work you had been doing before. And, you know, I just, you know, what, you know, again, just kind of wondering, like, you know, how, how do you overcome this and how do you become successful? Yeah, um, you know, I was thinking about this question. I, I just don't think there was any one particular roadblock because I think that um, and in, in different stages of our career, I think we're going to hit different challenges. Um, I, I can, you know, even before my sales days in my earlier security engineering days, um, I was part of a rotation program for a very big fortune 500 company. And at that time I was quite young. I was 27. Um, I was, you know, super green and super ambitious and wanting to do the right thing. And um, I always tell people like solving technical uh, challenges and technical problems are the easy one. It's the problems that are related to the soft skills and the people and the personality that are really challenging, right? And so I think in your 20s, you know, a lot of those roadblocks and challenges for me were more of the political landscape of how to navigate your relationships in the workplace, how to not burn bridges, how to have positive outcome in terms of getting the right influence to pursue your ideas, your project, um, and how to manage perception, right? Those, I, I think those are all um, earlier days of challenges and skills that um, I think I was fortunate enough to be able to practice and exercise um, those skills. And having the opportunity to do that was just a wonderful um, place to be. Um, and then I think in the later on of my uh, career um, in enterprise sales, um, I definitely see roadblocks in terms of commanding the room when you speak um, as a woman, as a minority in the cybersecurity profession. Um, there's only 3% of like woman leaders in cybersecurity. And I, I think most of the people we work with or I work with are men as well. Um, and I think there's a... Uh, right many different people in from different culture and different backgrounds. And um, I think when you're in sales, um, it's a it's a pretty interesting role that I think that a lot of people, um, you know, shy away from because maybe they're like an engineer and they're like, oh, I'm not a salesperson, right? But I think one of the milestones and 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 mind block to me more than anything is I realize that everybody, it doesn't matter what role you have, we have a salesperson in us because we are constantly selling our results, our ideas, um, and and 
trying to get a budget. We're trying to get something implemented because we feel like that's the right thing to do, right? So we're constantly selling. Um, and so I think the word sales is overrated. Um, I think to me, when I think about sales, I think about problem solving and being convinced, uh, convincing to others that, you know, you're the, the, the strategy and the solutions that you're presenting is valuable for other people, that they are willing to pay for it. So um, I think the roadblocks I have in sales is, you know, I think it's a way of communicating. I think communication was um, a big area that I think uh, everyone always have room to grow in. Um, when you are com communicating with uh, different groups of people with different backgrounds, um, you have to adjust, you know, um, you know how you communicate, but that's not what's matter. Um, the, it doesn't matter how you communicate. The biggest thing with communication uh, that matters is how others receive your communication. And I think uh, from a personal growth perspective, uh, that is something that I work really hard in. And when you are communicating to the listener, it's not important about what you want them to hear, it's what they hear from how you communicate to them. So I think that's one big roadblock. And then I think it, the other is how other perceive you. There are gonna always be naysayers or non-supporters um, and that's okay, right? Um, I think that from a personal growth perspective, uh, you have to gain the confidence in yourself and what you're doing and do whatever it takes to get that confidence. Because if it's, is it doing it a thousand times? Is it studying? Is it mastering something? What does that mean for you to get that confidence? I think is what you need to do for yourself because with with the assurance and the confidence that um, you uh, bring to the table, uh, you're going to be, you know, respected for, for what you do and what you say. And there will always be naysayers or non-supporters, but that's okay. This world is really big. There are a lot of people in this world and you only need to achieve the right people to believe in you and to support you. You don't need a hundred percent. And so when you have that in your mindset, you can be really, you can be successful in anything you do. That's awesome. That, that's a really great answer. And thank you so much for sharing those points. That was really inspirational. So somehow along the way, L1, you decide, I'm just going to create my own software company. So tell me, like, what what caused this um, light bulb moment for you in your career that made you feel like this was the right next step for you? Um, yes. So um, after I left RSA, um, I really uh, didn't have any plans to start a company. Um, I, I, I believe in the power of working with really good people. I believe in the power of knife sharpens knife, right? When you're working with other A players, they're the one that's going to make you better and they're going to push you and vice versa. And it's just a great thing to have people with you than to do it alone. Um, and when I left RSA, I didn't know I was going to start a company until I realized that I had exhausted my search of where I want to go. Um, you know, part of my journey in my career was at Deloitte. And when I was at Deloitte, I got to work with some of the most amazing companies um, that are the largest company in the world. And I've seen tons of management style. I've seen tons of, tons of different culture in organizations. Um, came to Silicon Valley, um, experienced the tech life and the culture of tech. And um, it's great to experience all of that because it gave me a very broad perspective and understanding of, you know, uh, different organization to apply my knowledge. Um, however, at that time, 
my journey have came to an end with corporate world. Um, unfortunately, I just wasn't inspired anymore. I was not excited about the roles that were presented to me. Um, and that perfect storm didn't happen for me. Um, I think if it did happen for me, my life would have been very different right now. But at that time, timing is everything and right. it did not happen for me. And so um, I did have customers that I used to have and relationships who understood my value and they had asked me to help them with business continuity or a GRC risk program, um, helping them with, you know, different projects here and there. And so I took those um, as a, you know, individual consultant, um, like the journey that you're going on now. And along the way, I realized that people needed um, the solution that I had in mind that I always thought the cybersecurity uh, industry needed. Um, and um, so I, I started giving it some thought about, okay, do I want to build the software platform? Do I really want to go in, on this um, software entrepreneur path? Um, it, it's a journey and everything that I did and everyone I talked to uh, really validated that there was really a need. And the inception of how we started C1 Risk was that um, the existing product out there for GRC was really costly and very heavy uh, implementation uh, costs. So yes. from, a, from a human capital perspective, as well as financial perspective, right? Um, and technically, um, it may or may not be way too complicated as well for many companies. So that was very apparent to me because I did work with some of the largest account, um, you know, um, that when I was at RSA. And what occurred to me and what I really wanted to do as my gift to society <laughs> to make me feel like I'm making an impact and what gets me up every morning is to do something that uh, I can feel proud about was that all these other companies that are private companies, all these startup companies and every company that couldn't afford the $13 million budget for a GRC needed and have compliance and risk management needs. They need, they have those needs too. They just didn't have that type of budget to make it happen. But that market is still so big. 80% um, of all the supply chain in our military system are SMB businesses. So 80% of all those supply chain company needs to be in compliant to NIST so that they can protect the military data, right? Right. Um, that's a huge market. Um, and so it, I, I just really feel like there's a huge need that wasn't being fulfilled. And, and I think there's also an innovation side of things that got me really excited. Um, at that time, uh, it, we were in the early days of cloud infrastructure. And in my career, I've gone through data centers data center consolidation, co-location, you know, uh, we, we went from, you know, servers to virtual machines. So I have gone through many iterations of te technology transformation. Yep. This was a technology transformation into the cloud that cannot be denied, just like currently Gen AI cannot be denied, right? Um, when I was going through this process, you cannot deny that everyone is going to leverage the cloud infrastructure. And it was just going to be another technology transformation phase that um, is going to change a lot of things. And so I really, really started like diving deep into those technologies back in the very early days. And trust me, it was really early because there were so many enterprise required controls that are regulated for companies that you couldn't do in the cloud. You have to compensate for them. And it was really difficult to fully be 100% you know, cloud infrastructure because companies have obligations 
to meet, you know, controls and regulations. So it's not what it is now. Um, but that that gap is like completely closed. Today, you know, seven, eight years later, you can do everything in the cloud and you can do it in a way more efficient and more secure way than having a data center. And Absolutely. so the time changed so fast and we and I was completely inspired to ride this um, transformation and um, the existing products have large teams. They're not going to be able to pivot as fast. And so we were able to take advantage of that uh, time period and being a small team, being really quick to pivot, being quick to adopt, um, uh, really worked to our advantage. Um, and so I think it was both, you know, seeing a gap in the market and wanting to provide a cost effective solutions to uh, m many companies who, you know, didn't have any automation for GRC mm -hmm. and a perfect storm of innovation and digital transformation period. The timing would, couldn't be better. The timing just couldn't be better. That's incredible. Um now, remind me again, C1 Risk, your company has been around for five years? So um, we actually incorporated in 2015. Uh, so oh, it's so. Yeah, yeah. But <laughs> we we had an initial V1 product and then we had to, we had so much uh, lessons learned from it. And, you mm -hmm. know, that, that was a, a great experience. We had to completely rewrite our product, um, and we were doing that like in 2021, um, like during COVID, and and now we're, you know it's almost like a new company. We're we're a new company. Everything is just like, um, you know, we we have so much lessons learned from the initial, you know, cloud infrastructure, cloud model. Um, for a SaaS application to where we are now, it's just completely new. So I could see why you think we're new, but um, even though we are new, we are, we've been around for a long time and we have great right. customers that have been with us. And yeah, it, it's now it's like better than ever. <laughs> yeah. How did you like found the company? I mean, it's like you, you, you didn't have experience before working you know, at a really small startup, right? So a lot of people, it's like they've had that experience and so they know exactly what to do, but you didn't have that and yet you managed to overcome that. So what what did you do? What's your, how did you manage to make it? how did you manage to make your dream a reality, I guess? Yeah, so I've always been the kind of person that are really like um, attracted to people where I can absorb a lot of information from. And, um, and throughout my journey, I have met other startup founders. Um, I was ex like very interested in their journey and their path. And even though I've only worked for really big companies, um, I was really uh, uh, well aware of all the various different strategies of growth and um, you know, I really think that management consulting teaches you a lot and the way you think um, and the way you can be very creative and, you know, many different strategy that kind of helped me a lot. So I met um, and spent some time with um, people who are incubating companies from uh, Carnegie Mellon, CMU. Uh, there's a group of people in the Bay Area that have meetups um, and they found amazing companies that are, you know, some of the, you know, big names out there. Um, and so I did spend some time like really connecting with other people who are like, just so driven to build tech products, right. Um, so I have um, worked with them. And then um, just, just, um, I think the other, the other thing, was I wasn't inspired at all and I just think didn't think that I you know um uh I just think that at that moment I felt like it was time for me to do this and I really gave myself a business plan of like two years like I wasn't gonna you know I want I don't want to use bad words but I don't I wasn't gonna play around right with my career so I gave myself a time frame of two years and mm -hmm. I 
And I always tell myself, having a customer is better than having a boss. <laughs> and, here, here, definitely. <laughs> and and I always gave myself milestones that um because building a company is like a really big thing, you know, it could be such a huge rock that you could just like stop before you even start. So what I the my approach was give myself many milestones like and check in to with myself, like be accountable to myself, to my to my bank account, to my my network, to to how I spend my time and give myself many milestones like do I have customer that validates me? Do I have customer that is paying me, right? Because my bank account can't suffer from this. This is not, this is not play, you know, it's, it's, I'm building a company and a company should have revenue, right? Um, and so basically, you know, building mini milestone for myself turned into building milestones for the company's business roadmap. And it turns into, you know, updating our roadmap every year. So that's kind of how it all started. And um, and I just kind of approach it as like all the skills that you give your company or you give to other company that you have worked at, give it to yourself. And that's what I did. That's great. Um, thinking about, you know, all this work you've put in, um, I know that in the tech industry in general, you know, a lot of us suffer from burnout. How do you manage burnout? Because <laughs> you, you've got a million things going on. Um, are you just yeah. the energizer bunny that keeps on going? Or like, how do you, how do you manage that? Uh, yeah, that's a really good question. Um, I think in your, in my entrepreneur growth, I've learned to uh, always really value um people that I work with and, and growth. One of the growth spur that I had to go through myself is to trust others. Like I used to be a really good doer. I can do a lot of things myself until I burn myself out. But that is not a sustainable path. It's not sustainable because you're limiting yourself in not only the time that you have, but you're limiting the value that your customer can get from you. Okay. And so I think once you realize that you got to trust, you got to hire well, you got to build a good culture in your company, and you got to let other people do their work, right? And hold them accountable. And until you can experience that journey, uh, you you are at risk at burnout, right? Um, And so today, The way I see it is if I feel burned out, it's because I haven't delegated enough. And so it's time to delegate. So anytime I feel burnt out, it means that my company is now ready for that next level of role, the growth, right? Um, And and that's the message I send to myself. I like that. That's a really um, great approach. and I think it's true for a lot of people, you know, you just have to learn to, to delegate, right? Um, it's, it's so easy to think like, you know, I can do it faster, I can do it better, but, you know, um, you have to keep yourself sane at the same time, right? It's not about, yeah, keeping yourself sane is super important um, um, and connecting with and, and having the time to have work-life balance. I know that's a, such a cliche word for entrepreneurs, but um, I think what I mean by that is um, making sure that the moments, the time that you're spending is in a quality way where you get satisfaction out of it and happiness out of it is really important. You can get happiness from connecting with your family and loved ones and friends, or you can also get a lot of satisfaction and, and happiness connecting with your team, but you know, with purpose. Um, but it's everyone's journey is different, but I think at the end of the day, the connection is more important than anything. And when you're burned out, you're not good to the people you care about. And so true. I, think that, I think that's really important. And the other thing is, it's when you delegate, everybody wins. 
You're creating jobs for people who need the job. You're creating value to the market. Um, your customer will see, you know, the teamwork, you know, like they will see the result and the deliverable that you committed. So I think it's such a win-win-win situation that now I can never go back to just doing everything myself. <laughs> right. So I know you're very, very busy, um, L1, um, but I'm just curious, do you have a side hustle? Do I have a side hustle? <laughs> Anything um, beyond this? <laughs> you know, I try... Uh, Work-life balance is really important to me. So as of today, my only side hustle is to be, you know, an advisor to very limited mm -hmm. company. I think I only take one, uh, one company each, uh, you know, when I do have the capacity. And so I am an advisor to a company called Partner Tap, and I am very excited to be a part of that company. Um, it's a woman owned company and uh, they're not in cybersecurity. So I'm a, I'm an advisor to them as a cybersecurity, you know, advisor. And I just, I love everything they, they represent. I love everything that they're doing. And I, I feel like that's kind of like my side hustle is to earn a little shares of companies that I believe in and just give them my time and my knowledge and whatever I can do for them. I'm really happy to. So that's my, that's my side hustle. Yeah. yeah. Sounds great. That's awesome. Um, what technologies, um, emerging technologies have you, are you excited about right now? There's lots of stuff going on, right? There's the whole chat GBT, AI, like what, 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 what's kind of got you interested right now? Yeah. Um, I know a lot of people are just going to naturally go straight to gen AI, but I'm not going to do that. Um, I think that is the second technology I'm excited about. The first technology that I'm really excited about are the, um, the new generation of integrating integration platforms. Um, we now have multiple cloud infrastructures right now and orchestrating networks and orchestrating applications, orchestrating the data layer across all three platform in a multi-cloud, high performance, secured way, I think is going to be a huge challenge for um, a lot of organizations. So I get excited about integration and APIs. Um, and so that's still the lane that I'm in right now. Great. Um, and kind of like to close things out, um, I want to know what your secret is because you always seem so motivated and passionate about your work, but how do you keep that up daily? Daily? <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. So, you know, sometimes I think about, I'm amazed at everything that the team has achieved and I'm super proud. Um, but I think one of the key factor is the fact that I trained myself to have the ability to shut down. Um, so, um, you know, I, I set, you know, goals for myself that on the weekends, I don't think about work or I don't sit in front of the desk that, the, you know, I don't, I'm not performing the same task that I'm doing Monday through Friday. Um, so on the weekend, I really refuse to be on in front of a computer I shut down you know like yes I can I can get emails on my cell phone but I don't have to respond to it right um and I'm not going to email my team on weekends and nights and weekends and drive everybody crazy mm -hmm. um, that's just not uh what I'm about so I think having the ability to shut down giving yourself white space to um to think through hard problems um, and oftentimes for me, that's taking walks. I love to take walks. And when I'm taking walks, I'm listening to my favorite music or my mm -hmm. podcasts. Um, I do listen to a lot of inspirational podcasts um, and other people inspire me who are just thought leaders and different perspective. They really like who are some of the ones that you like? Yeah. So, I mean, like currently, um, I'm a huge fan of uh, uh, Stephen Barlett. Uh, 
on diary a diary of a ceo it's a podcast um mm -hmm. on many of the networks so i've been listening to a lot of his po podcasts mm -hmm. i find it um it's, it's, all his guests has been super amazing um and i just find it incredibly inspiring um from any topic related to health all the way to um career and technology so I, I don't think there's any one particular person but it's a it's it's many people that inspire me and you mentioned those walks so um I believe you have three adorable dogs right so they get to go on these walks with you they also help keep you grounded they keep me grounded um yeah i mean you uh i i think that you know when you look at people from the outside you only see what you see you don't see the behind the scene so you know just to let everyone out there is you can't have it all so i don't have children but i do have three furry babies um and they they just give me so much joy um so much love and it's just unconditional and I am a dog mom so I just love pets um and yeah it, you know that's part of my balance right when mm -hmm. I'm not building the company um they they give me so much happiness so yeah they're great <laughs> princess um or sorry uh, no mini mini popcorn, popcorn and daisy. And daisy sorry yes yeah yeah mm -hmm. they're awesome Mm -hmm. great um is there anything i missed that you feel would be inspirational for you to share with some of the other listeners to uh, women who code um you know i think there's only one message uh for me that i can think of right now is um it's not the good days but it's the hard days that will give you breakthrough moments right uh, when you get through the hard stuff you have a breakthrough as a person and you gain another experience of dealing with that situation so to me um whatever you need to get through those breakthrough moment um have a network um you don't have to solve everything by yourself um and sometimes you know just giving yourself some space some time to get inspired to solve um, any issues or get through any emotions that you're dealing with. Um, those are all going to be something that's going to make you, you know, stronger and have those breakthrough moments. Wise words. Very <laughs> much appreciated. So ladies and gentlemen, that was Lily Yo, CEO and founder of C1 Risk. Thank you so, so much for sharing um, your journey with us. That Thank was really you. special to hear. Thank you. Thank you for having me.